Out of the street corners they scream. You knew it was coming. You've been waiting for this for months. Rumor hardened into fear and now they scream at you. The sirens, their hysterical wail tearing through the white noise of the city. And you run. You run to pick up those things that can never be replaced. A picture of them in the days when they still loved you. Your mother's wedding ring. And then you turn to your shelf of games. You only have room for five. Five games for Doomsday. Five Games for Doomsday is a show in which board game personalities are thrust into a cabin in the woods to outrun an oncoming disaster, but can only take five of their games with them. But which will they choose? My guest this week is one half of a partnership that is taking the world of gaming by storm. After six years of trying to attract the attention of the gaming world, my guest and her husband assume the task of taking over the gaming world. Since 2006, they've published over a hundred games, ranging from kids' games to heavy strategy games. They came to the attention of the world in 2011 with Village, which went on to win the Kennerspiel des Jahres, which they followed up six years later with the Exit series of games. My guest this week is the incomparable Inca Brandt. Inca, welcome. Hello. And so my first question is, was it difficult for you to just choose the five games to find only five was that hard it was very very difficult i never really thought about not having my whole collection if i went somewhere and five games is very few it was very difficult I think it's funny that if you speak to anyone who's not a gamer, they would say any any more than five games seems an awful lot <laughs> I think it's a very small amount. It was very difficult. Das war wirklich schwer. And so what criteria did you use to choose the games? Was it just games that you loved or games that you thought would be good in an apocalypse or was it sentimental reasons? So first of all, I packed my absolute top three games. Secondly, I wanted to take games that I want to get to know better. I'm pretty attracted to them, so looked forward to getting to know them better. And yes, three of my favorite games are there. Ich mich freue, das näher kennenzulernen. Und ja, so ist es eigentlich. Ein bisschen eine Momentaufnahme, aber drei meine Lieblings drei Spiele sind auf jeden Fall dabei. And so, how well do you think you would survive in this cabin in the woods? Can you chop down trees? Can you kill animals for food? No, 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 I can't. It'll be very difficult to have no fresh fruit to eat or water to drink. I certainly couldn't hurt animals. So let's go back to the beginning. When did you start gaming? How did games come into your life? Pretty much always. We always got a new game for the family at Christmas, and during the winter we played very traditional games. Rummy, for instance, my parents played a lot of that. Games were always a part of my life. In my childhood, I had friends who played a lot then. Later, I started playing again, but of course, completely different things. Seinen Freund und da äh, die haben ganz, ganz viel gespielt. Und da bin ich als Jugendliche noch mal zum Spielen gekommen, aber dann natürlich ganz andere Sachen. And tell me about German culture. Is it true? Because everyone says, I mean, I live in Germany, but I, I don't have a family here and I didn't grow up here. But they say that games are part of the family experience in Germany. Is this true? Das ist auf jeden Fall richtig. Also Kinder vor allen Dingen jüngere. That's absolutely right. For kids in kindergarten or at school, games are always there. It's not the case that people play them when they grow up, but every kid plays games. There's no German kid that doesn't. Es gibt kein deutsches Kind, was keine Spiele spielt. Is this a thing that you do in school or you do at home with your family? Are there are there game clubs when you when you were growing up? Nee, das macht man eigentlich in der Familie. Auch nicht immer, meistens um Weihnachten. No, that was with the family and mostly around Christmas. It was the case with a lot of friends of mine. This was pretty normal. People always give games at Christmas. I played less in school, but in kindergarten, before I went to school, there was a bookcase full of games, and I played a lot of games there. And what sort of games were you playing as a kid? 
wir haben klassische Spiele viel gespielt. Classic games like Ludo and Rummy and later when I was older, my first real game was Top Secret Spies and Incognito was an important game for me. Und Incognito gab es auch einmal, was jetzt schon für mich richtige Spiele sind. So when did you start playing hobby games? When when did they become a part of your life? Things that gamers play, things that you, the kind of games that you design now. Ich glaube, das fing an, als ich so 17 war. That started when I was 17. I visited some friends that played games a lot. They had a huge game collection, over 600 games, which was unbelievable for me. I started playing Settlers of Catan with them, and I jumped right into the gaming scene. I went to conventions, which I'd never done before, and that was when I was 17. And where was this in Germany you were living at the time? We lived in Gummersbach, that's close to Cologne. And so, did you, so you said you went to conventions, did you go to, when was the first time you went to Essen? In Essen, yes, muss ich mal eben überlegen. Hang on, let me think. It was 1997. That was the first time I was there. It's a long time. I've been going to Essen for just over 20 years. And so, how has Essen changed from 1997, the first time you were there, to today, the thing that it is now? Es ist natürlich sehr, sehr viel internationaler geworden. Früher gab es sehr viel mehr. It's become much, much more international. Um, Earlier, there were many more small German publishers. It wasn't so huge. It's always been big, but when I look at the big publishers' booths, it wasn't like that before. I think it's nice to see so many international people there, including publishers. That's the biggest change. And and so, what were the first games? You said you played Catan. What were the first kind of games that got you really excited and maybe made you think, oh, I'd quite like to make some of these one day? Back then, I never thought about designing games. I only thought, how can I discover as many games as possible? We played Union Pacific, Settlers of Catan. Mm, I need to think, that was so long ago. We played games for many small publishers. Zopf am Zoo, we played, we basically played a lot of games that my friends owned. So I think we're the same age. I think we were born in the same year. And so you've been playing games for a reasonably long time now. Why do you think games are valuable for people? Why, what do people get from playing games, do you think? Das ist halt einfach sehr, sehr gesellig und sehr, sehr schön, wenn man zusammensitzt, uh, man kann sich dabei unterhalten. Man It's kann really nice and sociable when people sit down together. You can really dive into another world. When you really get into the game, when you really get into the theme, it's like hopping on a plane to a fantasy world. I can do different things than I do in my normal life. Also, Catan taught me to negotiate, which I used a lot in later life. You can see how far you can push things. You can do things you can't do in real life. You can be a gangster boss, you can travel to the past, and you can experience all of this with your friends, and I find that special. And, and so do you prefer, because German games, it's, it's very funny when I first got into gaming, because I always assumed there were these things in which, you know, goblins or trolls fought against people or spaceships and I find it very strange at first when German games you know it's about farming or running a factory in Dusseldorf or something are you still able to feel that element of fantasy and escapism in a theme of a game that's maybe not in Middle Earth or in outer space? Also ich finde schon, also es kommt ein bisschen darauf an, ob das Spiel gut gemacht ist. 
wenn das Thema und der Mechanismus gut It depends if the game is well made. Dann kann ich mir auch If the mechanisms and the theme go well together, I can imagine that the stress of running a company can be a game. I don't think it's that important which world you go to. It's always a good experience and there's always emotion at the table. Of course people have their own preferences. I buy some games simply because I like the theme or the art. It doesn't always have to be set in the Middle Ages or in a fantasy land. Spiele kaufe ich nur, weil ich das Thema so toll finde oder die Illustration so schön ist. Aber äh, ich denke schon, das kann man auch mit Nicht-Mittelalter-Themen oder Nicht-Fantasy-Themen. Das funktioniert schon. Great. So let's go to your first game. So your first game is maybe after Carcassonne and Settlers of Catan, the most famous game in the world. This is Ticket to Ride. Why is this one going to the cabin? Also ich, das ist seit Ewigkeiten, seit ich es kennengelernt habe, ist es schon mein Lieblingsspiel. Das ist mein For a long time, Spiel. since I first played it, this has been my favorite game, my absolute top game. Probably because I played so much Rummy as a kid. There are so many parallels. You have a hand of cards, you collect and try to lay down cards. But the most important thing is that from the first second to the last, you are under pressure. I always want it to be my turn. I've always got my eyes on my opponents. Hopefully they can't take the cards I want. Hopefully they won't build their route where I've planned to build mine. This game is so entertaining, so engrossing and simply brilliantly made. So when you played it, were you, when you played it for the first time, were you designing games at the time or were you thinking about designing games or when you played it for the first time, designing games was in the future? I don't know exactly when it came out. 2004, I think. Da haben wir noch, da haben wir zwar schon Spiele entwickelt, aber noch keins veröffentlicht. So we designed aber some ich, games by then, but none had been published. Spiel habe ich erst sehr, sehr Later, I looked more deeply into the game to find out why it's so good, but not then. Wieso, Later, I looked into it and asked, how did he do this? Why is everyone so engaged? Also für mich but back then, it didn't inspire us or anything. Dass man da so mitfiebert und so am Tisch sitzt, das hat mich schon interessiert. Und äh, Aber damals war das irgendwie kein Thema, das uns inspiriert hätte oder so. So it inspired you later on when you were thinking more about design. Genau, als wir schon Spiele veröffentlicht haben. Exactly. When we'd had some games published and you start to think, what is the core of a game? What makes a game good or bad? And here is my favorite game. I should look at it again. And so... Why do you think, because it's your favorite game and it's a, it's a lot of people's favorite game, why do you think, what is it about Ticket to Ride that makes it just so popular? I think it's that you are always involved in the game. There's always a lot of excitement bound up with the things you have to do. The rules are simple. The tickets make things tense. These are great intermediate goals. You feel great that you built the route. Then you have another decision to make, to draw new cards. You're always engaged in the game, and the others around the table can ruin my game at any time if they block my route. It makes it so tense. I can never be sure of doing what I want to do. That's it. I think that you're always worried that everyone else is going to ruin your plans. And... So... Do you have a favorite version of Ticket to Ride? Because there are so many that are around now. Yeah, there are a lot, but my favorite is still the base game. Because I know all the cards at this point. I can set up the game quickly, explain it quickly to people who haven't played it before. This is one I love to play. So I want to go back and I want to tell a little bit of a love story. So... Everybody knows that you design games with your husband. Uh, how did you meet each other and how did you decide to design games together? 
Also getroffen haben wir uns schon sehr, sehr früh. Wir haben uns, wir wohnen ja in, in einem kleinen Ort. We first met each other when we were young. We both lived in the same little town. We got to know each other as teenagers, but we didn't like each other. Years later, we were both invited to a wedding. Marcus was friends with the bridegroom and me with the bride. And because we were the only singles at the party, they sat us together. I was not happy when I found out. <laughs> When the night began, Marcus started to talk about games. I listened in, and then we started to talk. We ended up being the last people at the party. We were awake until nine in the morning, and then we arranged to meet each other again at a games night. And that's how it began. Die Nacht verbracht und haben uns dann irgendwann tatsächlich verabredet zu einem Spieleabend zu zweit. Und so hat's angefangen. And so. So it it wasn't so much love at first sight as once you realized you had compatible interests, then he became a lot more interesting. Genau. Also das war, für mich war das halt... Exactly. It's very rare in a small town to find people you can play with. Marcus played a lot of games, and I played a lot more than that. Marcus had never been to Essen, though. He was more of a party gamer. Games like Taboo and Outburst, and I played more strategy games. Anyway, we fit well together, and so we got together as a couple. And so how long did it take you to convince Marcus to start playing strategy games? Was that straight away? Yes, that started straight away. He didn't really know any other games, and then he saw what different games there were, and he started to play them all straight away. And so, you said that you, in the notes that you sent me, that you went to a gaming playtest weekend, and that was the inspiration for you to start designing. Can you tell us more about that? Ja, das war tatsächlich ein Geburtstagsgeschenk, was ich dem Markus gemacht habe. Da waren wir gerade frisch zusammen. Yes, that was a birthday present from Markus. We had just got together and we went to this playtest weekend. It was really a settlers weekend where it was being played a lot, but there was also a prototype workshop that we joined in on. You could test prototypes and then rate them. We found that really interesting. This was the first time we'd seen prototypes, and we thought, these are made with markers on bits of paper. This isn't so difficult to do. Then we play-tested for the publisher for a while. They sent us prototypes, and we rated them. After we'd done this for a while, we thought, This isn't so difficult. We can do this too. Then we started to develop our own games. Und nachdem wir das ein bisschen gemacht haben, haben wir halt gedacht, das ist so schwer gar nicht, das können wir auch. Und dann haben wir angefangen, uh, unser erstes Spiel zu entwickeln. So it ended up being, I guess, a little bit more difficult than you thought because it took you rather a long time to get your first game signed. What were those first games that you designed like? Also das erste Spiel war tatsächlich ein, ja, ein Spiel, der war mal so auf so einer So the first game was a game where you washed up on an island and you had to survive. We gave it to the publisher that we got to know. They said, this is great, but there's no room in our schedule for it. But we stuck with it and didn't give up straight away. When I think about that game today, I realize that no one would have published it. They just didn't want to demotivate us. I told them that they could give us the game back, and he laughed. Still, if we hadn't got to know this publisher, we would never have designed games. He really supported us, and we always had a few good ideas in the games, but they were never complete. There were always problems that we didn't see. Later on, when we'd had some games published, we went back and worked on some of these earlier games. A few of them weren't bad. Schon welche veröffentlicht hatten, haben wir tatsächlich noch ein paar von denen verlegt, als wir sie dann überarbeitet haben von den allerersten Spielen. Ein paar waren schon dabei, die gar nicht schlecht waren. And so what were you doing uh, as a job, as a profession, when you were making these early games? Also ich war, bin gelernte Hotelfachfrau, habe im Hotel gearbeitet. Später I studied the hotel trade. I worked in a hotel and later in a law firm. 
But honestly, three months after I'd got together with Marcus, I was pregnant, unplanned. Then I didn't work. I stayed at home with my son, Lucas, and I looked after other kids. I had three or four that I looked after. I was something like a child carer. Und habe mich dann um die gekümmert und die wurden dann abends wieder abgeholt. Halt, ne? Das war so eine, so eine Tagesmutter, war das einfach, was ich dann da gemacht habe. Genau. Und so, you said, you told me it took six years to get your first game published. Why do you, seven years, why, why, do, you, why do you think it took so long? Also wir mussten einfach unglaublich viel lernen. Das sieht so einfach aus. We had a lot to learn. It looked so easy to make games, but it's not so easy. In the first year, we were successful. We published two games. We started with two games. We needed time to learn things and how to do things in the best way. And you can't forget that we had Lucas. He was a baby. Kids take up a lot of time. Then we had another, two years later. So we had two small children, and we didn't work as intensively as we do today. We worked on a game maybe one weekend out of three. That's very different today. Mehr oder weniger zwei Jahre später schon gekriegt. Wir haben halt auch zwei kleine Kinder gehabt und haben uns nicht so intensiv damit beschäftigt wie heutzutage. Da haben wir vielleicht alle drei Wochen mal ein Wochenende an den Spielen gearbeitet. Das sieht heute natürlich ganz anders aus. And so, how do you keep the motivation to keep doing it for seven years? This first publisher, he was always excited and encouraging. He kept saying, it's not quite there, but the ideas are good. You'll do it eventually. Even though we weren't successful, we had a lot of fun to sit together, to work on games, to think about new things. If it hadn't been so much fun, we wouldn't have carried on. And so, after seven years... You get your first game published. What was that game and how did it feel to finally have a game with your name on it on the box? Of course, it was amazing. It was everything we'd wanted. We simply wanted a game with our name on it in the shop. We didn't know if we were going to make more games. We just wanted one there. It was a dinosaur game, a kid's game. In the same year was Summertime. That was a Cosmos two-player game. For us, that was amazing. We went to the game shop and took pictures of the game. We were really proud. It was so great. Also das war ganz, ganz toll. Wir sind auch in jeden Laden rein, haben das Spiel fotografiert und waren ganz stolz und das war wirklich toll. And so, okay, your next game is, I believe it's called Streetcar in English and this is Linie 1. Why is this one going to the cabin? Ja, das ist auch so ein Spiel, was mich an unsere Anfänge erinnert. Das ist ja auch This is also a game from my beginner time. I've also played this one a lot. I like tile laying games in general. It's also a very cute game with the little trams. You have to build routes. It's a little bit like Ticket to Ride, though not completely. Still, you have to make connections. It's a lot of fun. It reminds me of earlier times, and so I want it with me. Macht mir unheimlich viel Spaß, weiß ich auch nicht. Das ist so auch eins, ja, das erinnert mich an alte Tage und das würde ich halt, das hätte ich halt einfach gern dabei. <lacht> and, and do you think it holds up today? Is it still a good game? Ich finde ja, ich spiele es tatsächlich heute. I think so. I still play it today. A lot of people complain about the dice at the end. You build the roots and then throw the dice at the end. But you throw the dice to see who has priority. It can be a little unfair, but that's fine with me. I like luck in games, and that's totally fine in a game that can last 45 minutes. Bei einem Spiel, was jetzt eine Dreiviertelstunde dauert, ist das auch absolut in Ordnung, finde ich. So, so this was made in the 90s, this game, and this was the time when people like Klaus Teuber, Rainer Knizia were sort of making a lot of games their heyday. Do you think that the 90s laid the foundation for what we have today as gamers? Auf jeden Fall. Also ich glaube, dass Siedler da Tür und Absolutely. Settlers opened the door for people to think differently. Wolfgang Kremer, when he invented the score track, the games were suddenly very different. You could do different things. You could negotiate. There was suddenly a different perspective on what worked. It was a very important time for us today. 
ja, hatte eine ganz andere Perspektive plötzlich, was alles geht. Also das glaube ich schon. Das ist eine ganz, ganz wichtige Zeit gewesen für uns heute. And do you think the games made then stand up to the games made now? Because a lot of people talk about us living in a golden age of gaming. Do you think it has improved so much since the 90s? Ja, ich, ich, ja, es ist eine schwierige Frage. Das weiß man natürlich nie. Ist ja auch immer alles ein bisschen Geschmack. Yeah, it's a difficult question. I think it's a matter of taste. When I look at games from the 90s, I think there's a lot in there that I don't want to play anymore. But there's a lot that have aged very well, that still stand on their own two feet. I think there's a lot happening today. Nevertheless, we had so many ideas from games like Settlers. auch wieder ganz, ganz viel. Aber trotzdem glaube ich, dass die Ideen immer noch angeschubst wurden, damals von Siedler von Katan. So, you had your first couple of games published. You went around the game shops taking pictures of them. When did game design really start to take off for you? When did, it, when did you start to think, this may be something I could properly earn money doing? Ja, ich glaube, letzten Endes war das mit Village so. I think that started with Village. We first won the Kennerspiel with Village, then the Kinderspiel with the Enchanted Tower. That was the moment I thought, okay, this is worth doing. I don't have to work in a hotel. I can work at home and achieve much more. We decided at that time that I would stay at home and work on the games. Ich habe zu Hause so viel Arbeit und kann so viel mehr schaffen. Dann haben wir, also in der Zeit haben wir entschieden, dass ich zumindest äh, zu Hause bleibe und mich nur noch um die Spiele kümmere. And was the Kennerspiel des Jahres a surprise? Or, or did you expect it? Nee, überhaupt nicht. Für uns war das eine riesen Ehre, überhaupt äh, nominiert zu werden, weil das Spiel sollte eigentlich No, not at all. Erscheinen. It was a great Hat's honor to be nominated. That game should have been released at Essen, but due to technical problems, it came out in December. I was really unhappy because I thought the game would flop. No games come out in December. It's Nuremberg or Essen. I thought the game would go completely under the radar. Then people started to play the game and were really enthusiastic, and the nomination was great for us. We were really happy and we couldn't believe it, and then we won it. It was a total surprise. Das war natürlich super für uns. Wir haben uns so gefreut und konnten es gar nicht glauben. Ja, und dass wir dann gewonnen haben, das äh, haben wir auch nicht geglaubt. And so, you, um, you, as I said in the intro, you, you've done over a hundred games now, which is sort of in a ten-year span. When did you start to really put your foot on the accelerator and start designing games in such numbers? Ja, ich glaube, dass It was because we started to be contacted by a lot of publishers. Can you develop a kids game? And we'd say, sure, we'll try. And that started to happen more and more. It wasn't that we specifically wanted to do more, but publishers asked us for more. In our hundred games, there are many small games, travel games, license games. We started working on commission and we're really proud that people asked us to develop games for them. So much so, it started to be a little bit too much. Das selber zu machen, sondern wie gesagt, die Verlage haben uns dann Auftragsarbeiten erteilt und ja gut, da ist man natürlich auch total stolz, wenn jemand anruft und sagt, könnt ihr das nicht für uns entwickeln? Und ich glaube, damit fing das an, dass es halt so viel wurde. Is it difficult to believe when you think back to those seven years when you weren't getting anything public? Is, is it difficult to believe where you are now as a designer? Sehr. Wir glauben das manchmal auch nicht und wir sagen uns auch jedes Jahr, Very. wirklich jedes Jahr. Sometimes we don't believe it and every year we say, every year, next year it'll stop. At some point people will stop liking our games. Our current success can't carry on. Every year we're waiting for the end to come, yet it keeps on rolling and we can't believe it. Really not. It's amazing and unusual and we know how lucky we are. Also wirklich nicht. Das ist schon toll und echt außergewöhnlich und wir wissen auch, wie viel Glück wir haben. So your next game 
One might say that this game, if you're stuck in a cabin in the woods in the apocalypse, might make you a little bit depressed, so to say. But this is Robinson Crusoe. What does this game do that other cooperative games don't do? Also, ich finde, das Spiel hat halt von der Story her so eine the story in this game is so important. I've played it four or five times, and I think it's great how you can get injured, then you put the card back and draw it later, and oh, my injury is infected. The story appeals to me so much. There are so many possibilities. It's so variable. There are many solutions. I can play different scenarios. I think this is great. That's what I really like about the story. It appeals to me so much. I can play different scenarios. I think this is great. Ich kann andere Szenarien spielen, also das gefällt mir sehr, sehr gut. Robinson Crusoe is famous for being very difficult. Do you think co-op games should be difficult? Also ein Spiel, was in der Komplexität so ist wie Robinson Crusoe, darf a game as complex as Robinson Crusoe can be very difficult. With family games, you should be able to win. It's all to do with the target group. It's good that Robinson Crusoe is demanding, that I have to play a scenario four to five times until I can win it. I like that, but a family game, like Pandemic, must be possible to win. You can't say generally that a co-op game should be so difficult. Ich finde, das kann man nicht verallgemeinern, ob das jetzt schwer sein soll oder nicht ein kooperatives Spiel. And yeah, so three of your games that you're taking to the cabin with you are co-ops. What is it about co-ops for you? Ich mag das total gerne, ähm, weil die Atmosphäre am Tisch so entspannt ist. Weil man ja als I love them because the atmosphere at the table is so tense. We fight together. It's a different atmosphere with co-op games as opposed to normal games, competitive games. I like it when everyone is tense. It's a lot of fun to find a solution together, to discuss situations if you have the right group. There are games when one person dictates what everyone else should do, but with the right group, it's great. Especially with kids. We found that kids love co-ops. Mit Kindern. Also wenn Kinder oder Jugendliche mitspielen, haben wir die Erfahrung gemacht, die lieben das Kooperative. So moving on, I want to talk a little bit about gaming awards and the Spiel des Jahres in general, because if anyone knows about it, it's someone who's won it twice. Is it surprising for you that the Spiel des Jahres is taken notice of around the world in the way it is? Because it's still the most important award of the year. Also das wundert mich tatsächlich oft. Also ich weiß natürlich, dass es in I think about that a lot. I know in gaming it's very important, especially for the publishers. I'm always surprised when I read in the English game press that the Spiel des Jahres is always mentioned. I ask myself a lot, where does it come from? It's surprising that people abroad know so much about it. Yeah, I think about that. Ich auch, woher das kommt, dass es so rüberschwappt in, ins Ausland, dass die Leute das so genau kennen und so genau wissen. Ja, es wundert mich. Yeah, I think it's something to do with the fact that Germany is still seen as the the home of games, especially a certain type of game. I think Euro games, Germany is still seen as the home of that kind of game. Yeah, that can natürlich sein. Yeah, that could be. Still, America is so big, and yet they take notice of our awards and who's won. I find that really interesting. So, I want to talk a bit about the process of being nominated for the Spiel des Jahres. Do you find out before the rest of the public that you're nominated, or do you just find out with the rest of us when it's announced? Ja, das ist ganz gemein. Wir erfahren es genau in dem Moment. Yeah, that's really mean. We find out when it goes online. If we think we maybe have a chance, Marcus doesn't go to work. He has a normal job. We sit in front of the computer and refresh and refresh and refresh the site and we find out with everyone else. Und wir erfahren es genau in dem Moment, wenn es alle anderen auch erfahren. And so, when it comes to winning the prize, I was at the awards ceremony last year. And I guess you don't know until they open the envelope, right? Yeah, niemand weiß es. 
No, no one knows. Only two people from the jury know. It's a secret vote and only two people know who's won. And so you were up against probably the biggest, one of the biggest games in the last five years. You were up against Terraforming Mars last year. Were you, and everyone thought Terraforming Mars was going to win, were you surprised when your name was announced coming out of the envelope? Sehr, weil wir immer gedacht haben... Very. For a game like Exit to Win is very difficult. You only play the game once and then it's done. And also three Exit games were nominated, not one. The probability that we'd win was very low. Of course, we hoped, but we didn't really think we'd win. It was a big surprise. And, and which win was better for you, your first one or your second one? That's very, very difficult to answer. That's so... That's very hard to answer. It's so special and special every time. I don't think you can find one better than the other. For both, we didn't sleep the night before. It's so exciting. Every time it's something special, and I can't say which one is better. And so, and so what do you get as a designer? Because you see, you see people walking around with the the wooden pawns. Is is that all you get? Is there prize money? What do the designers get? Or does it all just go to the publisher? Also, we bekommen tatsächlich auch diesen Holzpöppel. So we get the trophy, the publisher too, and nothing else. But you have to realize that the Spiel des Jahres is marketed like nothing else especially at Christmas. The exit games are sold everywhere, in bookshops, in drugstores, in shopping centers, in game shops. It's shot up the charts at Amazon. That's what we get. The sales go up a lot. It's incomparable. Bei Amazon ist es richtig hochgeschossen. Das ist natürlich das, was am Ende für die Verlage und auch für uns natürlich total schön ist. Die Verkaufszahlen steigen also horrend. Das kann man gar nicht vergleichen. And so Exit is, when Exit won, people were surprised, not, not because of the quality of the game, but the type of game it was, because the Spiel des Jahres is seen as very traditional. Do you think that Exit winning is an indication of a change of direction for the Spiel des Jahres? Also I... I don't know. We were all surprised when Hanabi won. It was a different kind of game. I don't think the jury have a set criteria. You can have small games, dice games. They can go for anything. The unique thing for Exit, though, is that you can only play it once. That was really surprising. I didn't think we'd be nominated for that reason. A game like this had never been nominated before. But it happened. einfach dadurch, dass es nur ein einziges Mal spielbar ist. Also das ist schon, das war schon überraschend. Ich habe auch nicht mit einer Nominierung gerechnet. Also genau aus dem Grund nämlich, weil ich gesagt habe, das nominiert die niemals. Aber haben so. <laughs> so your next game is another co-op and also another Kenner Spiel des Jahres winner. This is Legends of Andor. And also, this was something of a surprise, I think, when it won, just because of the theme of it. Why, why do you think Legends of Andor is deserving of the Kennerspiel des Jahres? The trend at the moment is for games that tell stories. The story in the game is becoming more and more important, and this is one of the pioneers. The legend cards tell a story. The mix between story and game is unique to Andor, and the jury chose it on that. Was erzählt, da muss ich das spielerisch alles bewältigen. Und das glaube ich, dieser Mix aus Geschichte und Spiel, das ist halt eben das Besondere an Andor, und das wird auch die Jury gewürdigt haben. And do you think, because as I said earlier, you know, you have American games, and it's Dungeons and Dragons and Lord of the Rings, and then you have German games and it's farming in Schleswig-Holstein. Do you think that fantasy and sci-fi is becoming more of a thing in Europe? You know, you have Terra Mystica and then the Gaia Project. Do you think, 
German gamers are turning themselves on to more fantasy and sci-fi, those sort of things? Ich glaube schon, uh, dass das ein bisschen in die Richtung geht. I think that we're going in that direction. Why it wasn't popular here, I don't know. I've always liked it. I've always read fantasy books. Also, there's a lot of gamers that watch TV shows, maybe because of Game of Thrones. Players want a board game about that. I can imagine that that's a reason. Da sie so Lust haben, sowas auch mal auf dem Brettspiel, im Brettspiel auszuprobieren. Ich könnte mir vorstellen, dass das vielleicht sogar tatsächlich zusammenhängt. And do you think that publishers in Germany are with with the outward influence of the rest of the world really getting into gaming? Do you think they're becoming less conservative now? Das glaube ich auch. Um das äh, haben wir auch festgestellt tatsächlich. Yeah, I think so. They've realized that people want new things. Ravensburger have games with fantasy, fairy tales. Yeah, they're becoming more relaxed and more open to other things. Also das stimmt schon, die werden immer lockerer und sind auch offen für ganz andere Dinge. So I want to talk now about your game design process. Because I guess having designed 100 games in 10 years, you must have a sort of process. So, who does what in the partnership? Also, wir haben wenige Bereiche, die wirklich aufgeteilt sind. There aren't really any areas that we've really divided among us. Normally, if we have a new idea for a game, one of us has the basic idea. Sometimes Marcus, sometimes me. It really depends. So when we really start, my job is what's on the computer. Cutting cards, art, gluing things together, what is needed for the prototype. I write the rules, I correspond with the publishers and answer the emails. Marcus always deals with the money, invoices and all of that. Also, if we have a game, a kid's game, for instance, that needs 3D components. Marcus does that because I can't see it in my head. But the creation process is always both of us. Und wenn wir jetzt einen sehr, sehr aufwendigen Prototypen haben, was im Kinderspiel ja schon mal vorkommt, irgendwelche 3D-Aufbauten oder sowas, das macht auch der Markus, weil ich kann mir das immer nicht vorstellen im Kopf, wie so ein schwieriger Aufbau von dem Spiel aussehen kann. Also diese Sachen baut auch der Markus. Aber ansonsten, äh, dieser ganze kreative Prozess, der ist, findet immer gemeinsam statt. And so do you have strengths that Markus doesn't and vice versa? Also ich weiß es nicht. Ich bin wahrscheinlich so mehr der Thematik. I don't know. I'm more of a thematic person. I look at the theme, the story. Marcus is more mechanical. He looks at which mechanics work best together. That's the biggest difference. Passt oder gerade gut ist. Also ich glaube, da ist der größte Unterschied. And then what's your what's your playtest process? Do you have a local group? Do you send it to publishers and they deal with it? Also die ersten Tests machen wir ja immer selber zur Not mit unseren Kindern. We do the first tests here with the kids. They live here, so they have to play. It's a huge advantage that there's two of us and we can test ideas straight away. Other designers who work alone can't do that. It's a huge advantage. Every Tuesday we have a game group here. They'll play whatever we put in front of them. Doesn't matter if it's a kids game, an exit game, a normal game, they'll test everything. Twice a month we hold a public games night and we can test our prototypes there and we go to a lot of gaming events over the weekends and test there. Zweimal im Monat einen öffentlichen Spieleabend, da können wir auch unsere Spiele und Prototypen testen. Und wir besuchen natürlich mehrere Spieleveranstaltungen im Jahr, richtige Wochenenden, wo wir dann auch ganz, ganz viel testen. And so, tell us, what do you have coming up in the next year? What sort of, what, what things do you have? Do you have any big games or is it just small games? Also, we have jetzt gerade uh, bei Ravensburger das Queensdale veröffentlicht. We have Queensdale from Ravensburger, a big legacy game that took us a lot of time and energy. So last year, apart from Queensdale and Exit, we didn't work on anything else. We're doing a couple of kids' games for Ravensburger, and these don't take up as much time as big strategy games. We have new exits planned, and we have some other things for next year. Then we're waiting for our next big idea. Ansonsten sind natürlich neue Exits geplant, die jetzt in der nächsten Zeit rauskommen und auch wir sind da schon ganz gut ausgelastet, auch fürs nächste Jahr schon. 
Und ansonsten warten wir jetzt eigentlich auf unsere nächste große Idee. So, it might just be in a few years time the the Brants might be the first family that have two generations of Spiel des Jahres winners. So tell us about, so your children have already had games published, is this correct? Yeah, that's is richtig, genau. Ich, uh, glaube, die haben yeah, that's right. Ganz, ganz they were very lucky. They were bored and they put some stickers on cards and designed cheating moths. I think this happens a lot in kids' bedrooms. They come up with games, but usually there's no one there that notices it. We saw it, though, and thought, what a great idea for a card game. So we sat down and we worked on it. That was fortunate. I think it happens a lot in kids' bedrooms that they make games. Das ist was taugt. Und wir haben es halt gesehen und gesagt, was für eine coole Kartenspielidee. Und haben äh, uns dann mit den Kindern hingesetzt und uns das genau angesehen und das war eigentlich deren Glück. Ich glaube, dass das ganz oft passiert im Kinderzimmer, dass Kinder Spiele erfinden. And, and you can buy this game in shops on Amazon? Ja, man kann die. Äh, yeah, you can buy it in shops. Sehr, sehr it's Cheating Moth. Damit. It's a Mao variant where you can cheat and it's really successful. Das ist eigentlich eine Mau Mau Variante ist, wo man schummeln darf. Das ist wahnsinnig erfolgreich. So, your next game is, it tells stories, but it tells stories that might not be considered the happiest stories in the world. This is this war of mine. Do you think this war of mine is a new type of game that is telling a different story than games have previously? Also, das Spiel uh, habe ich eingepackt weil es mich am meisten überrascht hat. I brought this game because it's the one that surprised me the most. I read the title and thought, oh God, it's a war game. I don't want to play this. Then someone explained it to me and they told me it wasn't a war game. It's about how people feel in war. It's one of the most emotional games I've ever played. When you have to think and make decisions and you want to leave the table because you don't want to make these decisions. I played this with my 15-year-old daughter and it was really interesting and exciting and you really dive into the game and when you finished, it stays with you for two weeks afterwards. It's the most emotional thing I've played. It's unbelievable. Interessant und spannend und da geht man mal ganz tief in sich und wenn man fertig ist mit dem Spiel, das nimmt man aber noch ein, zwei Wochen mit. Also das ist das emotionalste Ding, was ich je gespielt habe. Das ist wirklich unglaublich. So, I've got a, I've got a broad question for you and it, it, it's a question that a lot of people are starting to ask now. Are board games art? Uh, ich würde sagen, nein. Für mich ist es kein... I would say no, they're not art. It has more to do with fun and getting together. Obviously, there are games that are different, that are on the border, but in essence, it's not art, more social culture. Aber grundsätzlich würde ich die eher nicht bei Kunst einordnen, sondern mehr bei einem Gesellschaftskulturgut. And so you don't think that war, this war of mine comes close to being art? Doch, das ist tatsächlich schon nah dran. Yes, it's certainly close. Because for me, it does so much more than a normal game does. It's very different. It's very close to art. Also, das war wirklich, das ist wirklich, also ganz anders. Das wäre wahrscheinlich sehr nah dran. And do you think games can tell us anything about who we are as people? Or are they just there for fun? Nein, das kommt ein bisschen drauf an. Manchmal lernt man viel über die Menschen. That depends. Sometimes you learn a lot about the people you play with. Games allow you to act differently than you do in normal life. It depends on the people. Some people act in games like they never would in life. And you can learn a lot about people in these situations. Würde ich im normalen Leben niemals machen, was ich mir im Spiel erlauben kann. Aber andere, die können dann nicht abschalten und über die kann man sehr viel lernen. Das stimmt schon. Okay, so one more question. So you're driving to the cabin, and you're escaping the apocalypse, and you're driving really fast, and you go round the corner. The back seat, the back door of the car flies open. Four of the games fly out down a hill in a river and are swept away. Which game do you hope 
is still sitting on the back seat of the car. Es bleibt. I want to get to ride. It's absolutely my favorite game. <laughs> okay, okay, so if people want to contact you and see what you're up to, how can they do that? We have a homepage. We have a homepage and our email address is there and our telephone number. That's the best way to contact us. So no social media, no Twitter, no Facebook? Yes, we're on Facebook and Twitter. I read a lot and post very little, but Marcus sometimes posts things. You can also contact us there. Super. So, Inke Brandt, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. So firstly, I want to thank the fabulous Courtney Gossett for lending her wonderful voice. And if you want to suggest a guest, or if you want to say something nice about the show, or if you want to say something horrible about the show, you can contact me on at 5 games for doomsday on Twitter, or you can send me an email at 5 games for doomsday at gmail.com. You can give a rolling donation to help support the show at patreon.com forward slash 5G for D, or a one-time PayPal donation at the bottom of the website 5 games for doomsday.com. And if I haven't had to go over a waterfall in a barrel to escape the horny triffids and the man-eating potato skins, I'll be back in two weeks for another Five Games for Doomsday. Doomsday.